I finally got to ride the Polygon Extrada 7, and today we're gonna talk about my first impressions of this bike. First impressions are important, right? Like if you're on a first date, maybe spend a little less time talking about Godzilla and ask them about their interests or their hobbies. I took this bike to Slaughter Pen here in Bentonville, Arkansas, with the intent of sticking to beginner-friendly cross-country trails because that is what this bike is designed for, but that plan quickly changed. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I had a really good time riding this bike. We'll go ahead and start up here at the fork. There is a warning sticker on this fork that says for leisure cross country only, which does make sense on an entry level cross country bike. It says don't do any free ride, downhill, dirt jumping, or hard riding. That is incredibly vague. Now, clearly I didn't heed the warning on that sticker, but I strongly advise you to pay attention and follow the warning stickers. I like to think that covers me legally if you do something stupid. If you're new to mountain biking and you've never ridden on a nicer fork, then this thing is very suitable. I found it reacted more to medium and large hits or instances where I had to push into it harder to get a little bit more pop out of it. Over repeated small bumps and hits, this fork can be a bit harsh, but it performed admirably considering the price. Even though it isn't high end, I do appreciate the fact that it is air sprung, which is gonna offer some more tunability for different rider weights as opposed to a cheap coil fork. For a beginner learning the sport of mountain biking, sticking to green and blue trails mostly, this fork will serve you just fine. Something I forgot to mention in the last video is this bike shifted perfectly right out of the box. I didn't make a single adjustment to the drivetrain and I had zero issues shifting while out on the trail. Let's go ahead and get to climbing and the Extrada 7 handles this chore very well. It has a very comfortable pedal position and the front end doesn't wander like it can on real long and slack bikes. At just over 30 pounds, this is the lightest hardtail I've ever owned and it's much appreciated on the climbs. Pedaling around the trails, this bike is quick. The engagement on these Shimano hubs is seriously impressive for the price point. I often found myself in a harder gear than usual, just having an absolute blast pedaling down some of these trails while trying to discover some muscles within my own legs. I never found them. I am super grateful that this frame is not nearly as harsh as my Salsa Timberjack. I woke up today and my body was not howling in pain, which is something I couldn't say after riding the Salsa. Needless to say, I was pretty impressed by the ride characteristics of this frame. Handling on this bike is predictable and it was very easy to maneuver in tight or technical scenarios. I am glad I went with the size extra large because it does offer a little more breathing room for me to maneuver around the bike as needed. All those traits of this bike translate fairly well when things are pointed downhill. Obviously don't buy this bike if your descents are thousands of feet, horrendously steep, and just littered with roots and rocks. I don't know who needs to hear this, but this isn't a downhill bike, and I could see this fork easily getting overwhelmed in such a scenario. For flowy downhill runs, this bike was exceptional fun. When approaching more gnarly tech trails, you're definitely gonna wanna pick your lines more carefully. With its slightly steeper head tube angle, you can't just point this into a rock garden and expect to blast through it all willy-nilly. It's gonna require a bit more skill and finesse. Speaking of downhill, you'll probably wanna slow down or stop at some point. These two piston brakes are adequate for normal trails, but they aren't super powerful. You'll have to start braking sooner than you would on some more expensive brakes, but as long as you're aware of that, they function decently. Riding without a dropper post was definitely a throwback to when I started riding. If you live in a relatively flat area, you could probably get away with not having a dropper post, although I think most riders, including myself, are gonna do this upgrade. Overall, I'm really stoked on this bike. It far exceeded the expectations I had for it before this ride, which is awesome. With any bike in this price range, there's going to be some compromises, but I do believe a beginner could ride this thing right out of the box and have a really wonderful time. The three things I would strongly recommend doing to this bike is a tubeless conversion, adding a dropper post, and adding some sort of chain stay protector to help reduce the noise of the chain slap. The only thing left to do is to go out and enjoy some trails on this beautiful looking bike. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and come back because I'm gonna do something to this bike that I rarely do. We're gonna upgrade it.
Thank you for watching. Until the next one, stay rowdy within reason.